everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I want to show you a cool trick I like to use for creating chords and bass lines with the Step Sequencer in Logic Pro. Now, typically, you might not think of using the Step Sequencer as a chord progression writing tool. You might think of it more as a melodic tool, but it's actually really helpful for getting quick chord progressions out, even if your music theory knowledge is limited. So I've got a software instrument pulled up here, and the very first thing you want to do is set your key before we do anything. The reason why you want to do this is the step sequencer conforms to whatever key you've selected here. It's actually pretty easy to transpose from any major key to any other major key or any minor key to any other minor key, but it's pretty important up front that you decide if you want the song to be major or minor because this can cause some issues later on. So I'm going to go with A minor, and if I right click or control click here in the tracks area and select create pattern region, you'll see that this loads up the step sequencer and it also loads up one octave of notes in the key of A minor. So that's why I select the key first, because it makes the step sequencer conform to the key of the song. So I've loaded up an instrument on my software instrument track. It's just the vintage electric piano. You can see you can load it up right here on the instrument insert. And uh, let's see what this sounds like. I'll just play a few notes on my MIDI controller. All right, cool. So I like that tone, but what if you don't have a MIDI controller? What if you uh, are not a great keyboard player? Well, this is where the step sequencer becomes really helpful. Now, what I like to do at this point is I click here, and what this does is it pulls up the patterns menu or patterns browser. And I can go to templates, and then since I'm working in a minor key, I'm gonna select minor. And the reason why I do this is it gives me two full octaves of A minor. So I, I've got a, a lot more chord options um, I can work with. I can start here on, on the root note um, or the tonic note of the scale and I can work up or I can work down. So chord progressions don't just have to move upward, they can move downward as well. Now the thing I love about working in the step sequencer for chords is that you can easily build triads or three note chords just by skipping a note. So like A, C, E, is an A minor triad. F, A, C is an F major triad. And all I'm doing is typing in a note, skipping a note, and then skipping another note. Maybe I'll go down here to E. And that's just building triads. Again, just three note chords. If you want to build seventh chords, you just skip another note. Now I've got a E minor seventh chord. If you want to add a ninth to it, you can do that too. You want to add an eleventh to it. You can do that as well. Now, ninths and elevenths may not always work for everything, but seventh chords sound pretty nice uh, when they're used effectively. Uh, we have F, A, C. Maybe I'll add another E in here and make this a seventh chord as well. Now, if I play this back, it's just going to play these as sixteenth notes, right? That's that's not what we want. I want these to move more slowly. I'm just creating a harmonic sort of template for my song. So what I'll do is click here and go up to one. What this does is it sets the rate of the step sequencer to whole notes. So each of these chords will be held out for four beats. So the thing I love about using the step sequencer for chords is you can visually see each of the chord tones and their relationship to uh, the root of each chord. So like the root, the, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. The root, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. So like on this chord here, G, B, D, if I wanted to add a sixth to it, I could do that. And now this is a G, B, D, a G major chord with an add six. So I just love how easily you can visualize chords this way. And it's just as simple as typing a note and then skipping notes to create triads and then adding to those triads as you see fit. Now, if you don't wanna work completely within the step sequencer, you don't have to. You can just, like I said, you could just use this as a harmonic template for your song. So you can actually just right click or control click, go down to convert and select convert to MIDI region. And what this will do is just convert it to standard MIDI. So if you want to change the rhythm, you want to add some passing tones, you want to do something else with this, you absolutely can do that. I'm just going to keep it where it's at, but I am going to transpose this down an octave 
So I'm just going to select all of these and press shift option down. By the way, you can actually do this within the step sequencer too. As long as the step sequencer is in focus, you can use that same shortcut and it'll transpose the whole pattern up or down. Cool, so there's my keys. And I'm just repeating that with Command R, allows you to repeat. I said you can build a bass line with this too. And the truth in the matter is that the bass follows the chords. You want your bass line, at least the, the fundamental notes of your bass line, to follow chord tones within your chord progression. Let me pull up another instrument here. I'll just choose a, a preset here under bass. And I'll just use this finger style bass preset. If I hold option and duplicate my chord progression down, I can use this as sort of a launching point for my bass line. So I, let me go ahead and just mute the notes that are not the uh, root note of each chord. I'm just dragging over these and pressing Control M. We could try going down an octave. So again, I think of that as like the foundation, but we can do other things rhythmic with this. So let me just type in a little something extra here. Okay, so off screen, I created a really basic bass line. Again, the very first note of each phrase is following the bottom note of the chord progression. And then I'm trying to latch on to chord tones as much as possible, but there are some sort of passing tones in between. The bass line doesn't have to be comprised of only chord tones. You can use notes outside of the chords, but there, it should have a, a fair amount of, of notes that are within the chord. If you have a bass line where you have, you know, something like this going on and all of your bass notes are outside of the chord, then you're probably going to run into some problems with dissonance uh, later on. Even this note down here where I drop down to E for a bit, it's actually an extension of the E at the top here. So don't forget that you can work in, in different octaves. So now I've got a basic bass line here, and I'll just add a uh, drummer track here to build out a beat to follow my bass and chords. And then you can use this to flesh out this section of the song. You might have a different chord progression for different sections of your song. Maybe one for the verse, one for the chorus, another one for the bridge. So there's all sorts of different directions you can take this. And this works for all musical genres. So play around with this and uh, hopefully this helps you build chord progressions and bass lines in your own compositions, especially if you're struggling with music theory and struggling to come up with ideas. I, whenever I build a song, I start with the chords first and everything is sort of built off of those those chords. Um, the bass and, and to some extent the drums are as well. So the, the vocal melody, everything is based off of those chords. So if you come up with that rough harmonic structure first using the step sequencer and then flesh it out and all of your musical ideas will be harmonious with each other. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thanks for the support and thanks for watching.